Hi, welcome to this virtual contemporary worship service here at First United Methodist Church of Oak Ridge. My name is Chris Black and I'm one of the pastors here and I'm so glad that you decided to tune in uh, to worship with us this morning. Um, today we're actually going to be celebrating communion, virtually of course. Um, so I want to invite you now to pause the video and to go grab uh, some bread from your cupboard. A sandwich bread or, or a roll or anything like that and some juice. It could be um, orange juice or even wine or just water would work too. Um, bring those back uh, to celebrate the Eucharist together. Um, and now I want to invite us to uh, have a call to worship together. When you see those words flash up on your screen, whether you're alone or with family, I want to encourage you to boldly shout those out where you are. All right, hear these words. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim God's handiwork. The day pronounces God's glory without a sound. The seasons expound God's, God's knowledge without a word. And all their voices go out through all the earth. Let us join our voices wherever we are with a voice of creation in declaring God's glory. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was free
For our centering worship moment for today, I wanted to invite us into a space um, for a confession. So here are call to confession. Let us boldly confess our sins before the One who already knows our errors and is gracious to forgive our hidden faults. I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Um, righteous God, we confess that we have not lived as Your obedient children, we have honored You with our words, but we have denied You with our actions. We have not pursued the mind of Christ who took the form of a servant. For we have acted with selfish ambition. We have put our interests before the interests of others. And we have not regarded them in humility. Forgive us our arrogance and all our sins. Awaken our hearts to sincere repentance and enable us to will and to work for Your good pleasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now in the silence that follows, let us offer prayers of confession to God. Brothers and sisters, God offers forgiveness of our sins and abundant life to those who repent. Turn then and live in Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, for our sermon time, our brief meditation time, and our scripture time, I want to invite you to open up to the book of Philippians, uh, chapter 3, uh, beginning at about verse 4. Um, hear now these words. Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For His sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the sharing of His sufferings by becoming like Him in His death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me His own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. 
I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. God always blesses the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. Well, Paul's words for this morning are a simple reminder of the power and importance of our own story as we seek to witness to the gospel. As a kid, I can remember being in worship or in a small group at Fountain City United Methodist Church and having someone stand up and offer their testimony. And to me, this was incredibly interesting and a little bit even odd because it wasn't a a moment in church and worship and it was not like a Bible study. It was someone telling the story of their faith. I remember folks talking about how they became Christians or, or what Christ was doing in their life to inspire service and love for others. I remember hearing about how some people's relationship with Christ changed their hearts and minds and helped them to move past some addiction or, or sin that was present in their life. I remember hearing about how some were able to mend broken relationships with parents or loved ones because of their new faith perspective. I remember hearing powerful stories of reconciliation with God and others through a newfound faith. But more than anything else, I remember hearing story after story about how God's grace was moving powerfully in another's life. And hearing those unique stories from others helped me to reflect on my own faith and my own relationship with God. There is something truly powerful and unique about about this, about this moment of testimony. Through another's experience, we are able to reflect on our own experience and with the help of the Holy Spirit, be inspired to live out our faith in new ways. This is something that early Methodists uh, understood well. John Wesley encouraged his churches to try to meet each week in small groups to worship and study the Scriptures and to pray together. But they would also sit in a circle and go around and take turns reflecting on how they saw God working in their hearts and in the world around them. This sort of public reflection can help others as well as one's self to see things in a different way. To see God moving in a different way. That is why I believe that one of the most important parts of of a mission trip is the story that you actually bring back with you from the trip. It's important to go um, and to have that experience and to serve others, but it's also incredibly important to bring the story back of what you experienced. I can remember as a young person, whenever we had a choir tour or a college mission trip or a high school mission trip, we would always have stories from the experience. Now some of them were hilarious. And some of them were just meant for the group, you know, that went on the trip. But there were other stories that were to be shared in worship, in church, um, about who we had served and what we did and how God moved in and through us as we sought to be the hands and feet of Christ. These kinds of testimonials or stories can be incredibly encouraging. This is what Paul is offering up for us today in this Scripture for this morning. He is writing to the church in Philippi and to us nearly 2,000 years later and offering up a personal statement about his own growth in the faith. He reflects on himself and his former understanding of righteousness and how that was guided so much by his own actions. He talks about the markers of status in his old life. Then you see a shift in his writing where he says, yet whatever gains I had, whatever I had accomplished, whatever status I had, all this I regard as loss or rubbish because of Christ. Paul is proclaiming his own change of heart toward an obedient life of discipleship. 
He talks about not having or relying upon a righteousness of his own making that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ alone. He reminds us of the direction that each of our hearts should be pointed toward. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. In effect, saying, I want to know Christ so well that I share in His path, knowing the fullness of His suffering, so that I may know the fullness, the power, the powerful gift of the resurrection. Then He points us toward the future. He says, not that I have already obtained this or have reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus made me His own. He goes on to say, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal. What Paul is describing is a fundamental tenet of our United Methodist faith. We, as a people, seek to strive after holiness in heart and in life. Or perfection, as Wesley called it. This is sought after in response to the gift of salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Christ died for each of us and was resurrected to defeat death. And through Him we are reconciled to God. As believers, we respond to this gift by seeking to grow in our relationship with God and our service to others. Part of this growth is being able to share your own faith story with others. Your own testimony. And to to talk about how you have witnessed God moving in your life and in your heart. This also means that you can be open to receiving someone else's story. Just as you would want them to receive yours. Paul reminds us that intentionally reflecting on our own faith is incredibly important. And that sharing our faith story can lead others to a deeper relationship with God. And if we posture our hearts to listen to another's story, then we ourselves can be inspired in new ways. I guess that is my prayer for us this week. That you would find a moment to sit and take some time to listen to someone else's story. Whether they are family, or whether they're a friend or a colleague at work, or even someone in our community who is homeless. Listen to them. And look for how the Holy Spirit could inspire you through them. Then, I want to invite you to tell them about how you have seen God moving in your own heart and in your own life. Tell them about the gift of God's grace and the life that you have in Christ Jesus. Tell them about what Christ taught and did. Then, tell them about how you are responding to God's gift of grace each day by pressing on toward the goal of total love for God and a full love for neighbor. My hope is that you will look for ways to share your faith as Paul personally shares his his own faith in our Scripture for this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as we enter into our moment for communion, for virtual communion, I want to invite you, if you haven't already, to pause the video and go and grab a little bit of bread and, and some juice or water and bring it back here um, so that we can bless it together. Um, We are experiencing Holy Communion in a new way today. Though physically separated from one another, we are still bound together as family through our baptism. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually wherever we are, yet still present to one another as we gather from across our area. This presence is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's Word, and now our shared partaking in the sacrament. And now let us share in the great thanksgiving, this great prayer. 
When you see the words on the screen, I would like to invite you to speak those with me. May the peace and presence of the Lord be with us as we lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. Creator God, You made us in Your image to love and to be loved. When we turned away and our love failed, Your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of Your only Son, Jesus Christ, You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took bread, gave thanks to You, broke the bread, and gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat, this is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. When the supper was over, He took the cup and gave thanks to you gave it to His disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is My blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of Me. And so in remembrance of these, Your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves wherever we are in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Lord God, pour out Your Holy Spirit on us gathered virtually and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. In this season of social distancing, may You remind us that we are never spiritually distant from You. By Your Spirit, Lord God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in Your holy church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us offer that prayer which Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, as we've prayed together, I I want to invite you to consume a piece of bread with me. This is Christ's body broken for each of us. Now let us drink from whatever cup we have before us together. This is the blood of Christ shed for us. Now that we have received the sacrament as one body, joined together virtually, let us pray together. Day after day, You give Yourself to us, Lord God, in two or three gathered in Your name, in virtual connection across our area, and in bread and fruit of the vine. As we go from this unique gathering around Your table, may we feel restored to Your body, companioned by Your people and sustained by the power of Your Spirit as we witness Your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All of my devotion Now there's nothing in this world That could ever satisfy Through every try My soul will see No turning back I've been set
I'm so glad that you decided to, to worship with us this morning. Uh, before our benediction time, just a couple of announcements. I uh, want to make sure that you're aware of, of our website, fumcor.org. If you're someone who has checked out our worship for a few weeks, or maybe even this is your first time, and you want to know more information about our church, uh, we would love to connect with you. The pastors would love to connect with you. Um, you can send us an email. Um, our emails are on the website. Um, and just reach out to us, and we would love to, to visit with you however we can. Um, socially distanced, of course. Um, also, I want to make sure that you're aware um, of any upcoming news that could be happening with our, within our congregation, um, opening news or, or future missional events or things that we're doing in the community. Those will all be on our website. One highlight of that is a ministry that we're actually collecting some things for right now. It's our Christmas shop ministry. And there is a slew of things on our, our website of things that we need to make that ministry happen. So I would invite you to check that out on our website. 
now receive our benediction. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever He may send you. May He guide you through the wilderness and protect you through this storm. May He bring you home rejoicing at the wonders He has shown you. May He bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.